It's just about time to get back to our window grill project. The next thing we need to do is make some scrolls. We've made some bending forks, both a handheld bending fork and a vice mounted bending fork that we can use to help bend scrolls. But I also said I would make a scroll starter. And a scroll starter is a hardy tool that has a slope, very much just like the cresting of a wave, so that you can hook a scroll over the far side as you're starting this initial part of the scroll to help curl this and to kind of help pull it around a little bit to start the scroll. It's really an optional tool. I've never owned one before. I don't make that many scrolls and if I did I probably would have made one of these a long time ago. This is one of those tools that you could probably make out of mild steel and it would probably be just fine. Something like 4140 would probably be a better choice. Um, and something like S7 I think is probably serious overkill for a tool like this. So a simple steel but something you can harden would be nice and it needs to fit the hardy hole in your anvil. Now Larry in Burt Burnett, Texas sent me a couple of big flat rate boxes full of sucker rod bits and I have never seen sucker rod this size. Around here all you get is the three quarter inch stuff but this is a one inch diameter rod and the three-quarter rod we get only has a square coupling section of one inch, but this is just a hair over an inch and a quarter, so it's going to be perfect for my hardy hole. So we're going to use a piece of this sucker rod Larry sent to make our scroll starter. I think it'll be just perfect. This one inch rod should widen out to about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half to make the scroll starter and that's all we're going to need. The problem I have with sucker rod quite often is getting this coupling apart. I usually end up just cutting it off, either cutting it off at the square or cutting the round off and drawing that out to add a little bit more square because the, no matter how much penetrating oil and how big a wrench I use I always have trouble getting these apart. But he actually sent one that's already apart, so I think I may just square this up or maybe I'll do something else with this one because I've noticed, I've never seen this into this before because I've always had to cut them off here. This has a nice depression in it, which means if you cut this off down at this end to make your hardy shank and use this as the collar to set on the anvil, you would have a tool with a little depression which would be very easy to refine with a ball tool of some sort into a rivet header or some other small ball switch. So maybe I'll save that for this for that kind of a job and I'll use the piece of the coupling and just go ahead and cut this off and I'll just lose that little bit of threaded bit. I'm not sure what these are that looks like it might be stainless although there's a lot of rust inside so it may also be galvanized in which case I don't want to put this part in the forge and since I'm not sure we're just going to chop it off on the chop saw, head over to the forge and let's make a scroll starter. Because this stuff is made out of hard steel, a chop saw or an abrasive blade on an angle grinder is really about the only way to go to cut this stuff off. It's either that or get it hot and cut it at the anvil, but I was trying to preserve as much length as I could and cut this bottom flange off and kept it so I can draw that out and make my hardy shank just a hair longer. Cutting it off at the anvil, I might not have been able to do that. Plus, I would have had to heat up that hunk of unknown coupling that I don't know if it's stainless or if it's plated somehow and something that I don't want to put in the fire. So, chop saw, angle grinder, some sort of a big cutoff saw. I think this would ruin your bandsaw blades. So, to use this part of the sucker rod, it might be a requirement to have some sort of a big saw. Anyways, I've cut off a piece. I've left enough to make our tool on the top. I've left enough to get a good hardy shank on the bottom. This flange will probably create a cold shut in the hardy shank, but down here it's just ballast. It just makes for a heavier tool. It's less likely to rock around in the hardy hole, and I'm not too worried about a cold shut down in this area. If I harden and temper this, I will only be hardening and tempering this end. So not too worried about that at all. I'm going to start off just by drawing out that flange and making it a square to match the square shank on the end of the sucker rod coupling here. Now 
made the mistake of uh, waxing a project over at the anvil the other day, so my anvil is good and greasy right now until I burn that wax off. The other thing that would be good for a tool like this is the section of jackhammer bit like we've used before. I'm actually going to put a little taper on the very end of this to make sure it'll fit in the hardy hole. Knock the corners off just a bit. So that's still too big. This is actually larger than my hardy hole. That's great. It's starting to go in there. And even up my taper a little bit. And be careful about getting this up here because you'll squish your little bit of a shoulder. And I don't really want to do that. So it starts to cool off. It gets really hard to forge. You might as well go back in the fire. So you can definitely see I've got a real big fish lip issue going on here. And I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but you can see a little cold shut here where that flange got beat down. If that was going to be hardened and tempered, that would be terrible. But, I'm not going to harden and temper that part of it. So I think it will be just fine. That's about what I want for now. I will drive this down in the hole to create a nice clean shoulder and upset this bulge just a little bit more. Now this is a great place to work in a swedge block or something like that if you have it. It fits your hardy hole. But not everybody does. But be careful doing this. There is a chance of breaking the tail off your anvil if you're too aggressive. Now I have a 300 pound anvil and I'm using a 6 pound sledgehammer. So I don't think there's much problem. You've got a 75 pound anvil and you decide to do this with a 14 pound sledgehammer, the odds of breaking the tail off your anvil go way up. You'll also notice I didn't let this end get too hot because I don't really want to upset that much. Doesn't hurt if I do a little bit. but Got all four sides. That seats down in there quite nicely from any direction. So we were done with the hardy shank. You notice it doesn't have a real sharp edge here. It doesn't need one because this isn't a tool that's driven down in use. It's one that's worked over the side. So it just has to be good and stable. Now it's really just a matter of flattening this out and drawing the end out into a taper. It's okay if this fish tails a little bit, but you don't want too much. And you want it to come to a near point. You can see what we're getting. It's going to look a lot like a tall cutoff hardy right up to the point that we bend it.
I'm going to work that over the horn just to preserve this curve in here. If I work it here, I'm going to end up having to create a step, and I don't want to do that. I want to leave it, leave it looking nice. Also a good time to start checking this for square with your hardy hole and refine the hardy shank if you need to. Well that's just almost square. Or parallel or whatever you want to call it. That'll do it. Just a little bit more refinement of the tip, and we're going to be ready to start bending this. If you're making this out of the smaller sucker rod because you have a smaller hardy hole, you really do need to let this flare out some. I think ultimately you're going to want at least a one inch width at the very tip of this. So that would be right across through here. I think you want at least an inch in the finished tool if you can get it. This one's looking like it's going to be about an inch and a half. and keep it all straight. We're running out of opportunity to fix it at this point. What I'm doing at this point is trying to get a nice flat surface across the top. I don't want this to be bowed out or rounded. Just cleaning it up and making it what I want. And the very last thing I'm going to do before I bend it here is I'm going to put a little bevel on here and that will be on the underside it will help me create a little bit sharper edge right here. You can grind this bevel in too. Doesn't need to be razor sharp, that isn't the point. It's about having something you get the edge of the scroll to tuck into is what that bevel is for. That's going to need just a little bit of filing, hot rasping, grinding, whatever you feel like doing. Before I do that I'm going to put my touch mark on this side over at the treadle hammer. Pretty much straight and flat across the top. And I want the tip to be even with that slight bevel. I'm just cleaning up the edges because I'm here. But instead of being sharp, I'm rounding that over just a little bit. It's 
It's not a cutting tool. Okay. So here is our tool ready to bend. We just want a nice graceful bend and when we're done we want the tip pointing 90 degrees or parallel to the ground. So find a nice smooth spot on your horn to start this or on your, the edge of your anvil and probably do it all right here. You may not need the horn but you can also stand it up in the hardy hole right where it's going to go in the long run and do a little bit of work here. And that's pretty much just what I want. I consider that to be a completed scroll starter. I'm a piece of one inch sucker rod using the square joint as our hardy hole. Everything looks pretty parallel. I'm going to let this cool and I think I'm just going to let it air cool. And I think this stuff is so tough that there's just no reason I need to harden it. So now let's look at a, a real quick scroll just to see what you use this for. Any scroll needs something done to the end of it other than just chopping off a square bar. And we'll look at some of the options as we get into scrolls. This is just going to be a two-sided parallel taper. This will make the end of my test scroll a little more delicate, make it look better. So I'm keeping this as a quarter by half bar. I'm keeping it a half inch wide throughout. But I'm tapering it down to almost a chisel point. So that's all we want to do there. Now we're going to start to scroll it. In Partly force a habit on my part and partly because I think it might be a better practice, I'm going to start this at the edge of the anvil and then go to the scroll starter. I'm just going to kind of gently roll this right at the edge of the anvil and start to establish what I want for the end of my scroll. Now I'm going to go to the scroll starter and start to roll that over the edge of the scroll starter. So now I can put this over the edge of the scroll starter and that gives a place for that curl to continue to roll around as I work the end of my scroll here. Remember scrolls are about finesse, not brute force. So an unhardened scroll starter or a mild steel scroll starter is going to be just fine. Now as your scroll starts to take shape, you might actually be able to pull it around the back of the scroll starter some if it's a tight enough scroll. This one really isn't. It's going to hit my anvil before I get there. But I've seen people that do that. They get them close to started and then they can lever around the scroll for them to kind of give them a bend. But at some point, you just don't need that anymore. And it's time to just go back to the anvil or to go to your bending forks in the vise and roll up your scroll. Well, here's our scroll starter. It's all completed. It is still too hot for me to touch, so we're not going to take any closer look at it than that last bit on the anvil. This is the last tool we're going to do before we get into making scrolls. Then we're going to look at several different styles and types of scrolls. And then we'll get into making the scrolls for our window grill project, and then we'll be able to start doing some assembly on the window grill project. So we're getting closer. I hope you enjoyed this. It's a good tool. It's one I should have made for myself years ago. I think it'll be very useful and it'll probably improve my scrolls somewhat. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit the subscribe button. Do share the videos with your friends. Watch a few more. But make sure you leave time in your day to get out to the shop, make something, challenge your abilities, make some tools, make some projects, 
But do stay safe, do wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one. Take care.